Hey there YouTube! Has been a wee while, I know. I've been all over the place, I've been doing stuff, I've been working, I've been writing, I've been down to London to see Wolfgang Wan and his mom Jan, who is ace, and lots and lots of people. Oh, we've just been so much fun, and I'm knackered now. I'm utterly wankered um, as a result of that trip, and as a result of the great big heaping bowl of casserole and potato and bread rolls and all that other good autumnal stuff that I devoured not only seconds ago. Yes, I am currently in the midst of the process of digestion. I thought I'd get intimate with you on that and just share that with you right now. I am in fact digesting the day's meal. Which means that, like the lizard or snake whose habits I do seem to emulate quite a lot, um, I'm not really that active right now, so how this video will go, I've no idea. Fusors, fusors are the thing at the moment, apparently. Um, incidentally, I've been watching, just as a, an aside, I've been watching, re-watching, really, the anime series Death Note. Ooh, I loved it when I first saw it, but I don't think I was old enough to appreciate just how clever and brilliant and wonderful it actually was. I'm sure I'm going to be doing... I, um... I did like a post on, on Facebook asking people um, about the morality of the Death Note and of the characters in the series of, of Light, Yagami and of El and all that stuff and whether if um, they got hold of a Death Note would you use it and why and who would you use it on and what would your moral reasoning be and all this stuff. Um, oh, pardon, a little bit of the digestion coming back there. Pardon. Mm. Uh, yes, I, I, I'm just wondering uh, what the moral reasoning would be for using the Death Note. Um, I'm not sure. I still haven't finished sort of figuring it out in my head yet. My brain meat ain't got done that yet. Um, so I'm going to finish watching the series and then I'm going to do a big video about it, about the morality or immorality of <clears throat> the Death Note and of killing for moral reasons and all of this stuff. Until then, I can't do it now. If I do it now it'll be a fucking mess. Um, I'm going to be reviewing some Fusors. Fusors. People have been doing f Fusors quite a bit of late. Ray, um, I Love Mess did a couple of Fusors. He did Injector, who is the the ugliest son of a bitch out of the lot. But I, I really love Injector, Aquasting, as he's already known. I've already done a review of him, though, and he's he's sort of like... He's been done, he's been done. Don't want to do him again. Um, I, I want to do some of the Fusors that nobody else does. Um, like this chappy, for instance. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Yeah, he He's rather sexy. Nobody likes him. I don't know why. Everybody loves Silverbolt. Everybody loves Quick Strike. Everybody loves Injector, even though they hate him too. Uh, I don't really know why. I really like this guy. He's, he's fucking weird. He's a weird, odd beastie bot. And um, the Fusors are strange experiments anyway. They, they're, they're, they're Predacons whose, or, or rather they are protoforms whose... Uh, transformations have been screwed up by malfunctioning stasis pods that have scanned two life forms instead of one and fused them into into one single beast mode. So Sky Shadow here, as you can see, has elements of both the a reptilian sort of lizard form and also an insect, maybe some sort of dragonfly or something like that, perhaps. I don't know. Uh, never featured in the show, barely featured in the comics, has very little in the way of character. There we go, a bit more digestion again, just to keep it up appearances and be consistent. Um, he, but he does have a little bit of character in the, the, the Beast Wars source book bio. His is one of the few that's actually quite good. He's a, interestingly, he's a Predacon politician. He was a Predacon before he his stasis pod was put aboard the Axelon. He, um, bizarrely, had his spark forcibly, uh, surgically removed and put into a protoform aboard the Axelon in the interests of taking possession of protoform X, otherwise known as Rampage, so he could use it for his own ends. Uh, before that, on Cybertron, he was a Predacon politician. And he was quite well liked, by all accounts. Quite popular. Even the Maximals liked him. Because he's quite smooth-talking and very manipulative and knows exactly what to say and what not to say and how to charm you 
people and seduce them and manipulate them. He's a proper old Predacon. I like that. I would have liked to have seen a lot more of him, actually. Um, in terms of combat, he's some sort of stealth operative. He can camouflage himself. He can blend in with his background and become basically invisible, which is rather cool. And Cat is, ba is uh, undetectable to sensors and all of that garbage. The toy is a weird, wonderful experiment like all of the, the fusels. He's the equivalent of Silverbolt. Um, if he was in the show, he would have been the, the Predacon equivalent of Silverbolt. Um, which is interesting, because they have certain parallels in their characters, too. Just as Silverbolt is a warrior, this guy is a politician. Just as Silverbolt favours honest speaking, this guy favours double speaking and uh, manipulation. Uh, Silverbolt is forthright and brave, this guy is deceitful and cowardly, and so on and so forth. So it would have been nice to see him in the cartoon, but he didn't feature, sadly. I like the toy. It's it's weird. It's very, very strange. It has, like, two heads. There's the... Bizarrely, the insect mode head has ended up on his back, and the lizard mode head is there, and he's got two sets of wings, and he has these long lanky lizard feet and this weird weird tail with the bot mode head prominently on display that's a wit a wee bit weird but I like it I like him he's nice he's colorful and bizarre and completely organic there's hardly any technical details on this guy at all and like all the fusels his transformation is weird and his bot mode is weird and he's just completely weird in almost every conceivable way it's a it's so far removed from the uh, the trans metals which came out at exactly the same time these the, the fusels were like the sister line to the trans metals and were aesthetically completely different the trans metals went all kind of generation 1 for their aesthetics because they were they were completely coherent and symmetrical and they had more mechanical details these guys were like like the old style Beast Wars. They were asymmetrical and they had arms and legs and bits and pieces and organic stuff everywhere. Very, very strange. In fact, Silverbolt is probably the most coherent in bot mode, arguably, of them. This guy... Well, this guy's just... Well, he's bizarre. He's very, very strange. I like him. I like him, but I really understand if people do not. Anyway, that is um, Sky Shadow in his bot mode. It's well, it's very much like the Beast mode. It's a it's an utter mess. The stuff everywhere. This arm is the insect mode head with this the wings made into this wonderful pincer. That's nice. So we like that. He can actually hold some maximals in that. Uh, he's got he's got this weird thing with the the other wings coming up his chest like that. Apparently, he can use them as blades. That's uh, pushing it a little bit. I think he has this weird, weird organic head, which is sort of stretched back. It's a rep it's reptilian, but it has insect mandibles and it has this ridiculous missile sticking out of it. The other hand, he does have another hand. He has another. His other hand is a bit like Tarantulus's hand, but you have to flip back the lizard head to find it. He has those three sort of stubby digits that he can grasp things with. I doubt very much in this mode that he would be as effective as a politician, simply because Transformers would look at him and think, "God, he looks really weird. I'm not going to vote for him." Um, but as a toy, I like him. He, his, pa his plastic is great. He's really colourful. He's almost completely organic. He, he hardly has any technological details at all, which is quite odd. But very, very, very nice. I like him a lot. It's not to everyone's tastes. In fact, I'm fairly certain a lot of the, the sort of hardcore G1 people out there will be looking at this in utter fright. Uh, I kind of understand that. It took me a while to warm up to him. He's a lukewarm transformer, this one. You have to sort of sit there and mess with him and sort of mull it over in your own mind before you decide whether you like him or not. I've decided that I do. Quite a lot, actually. He's lovely. Very, very lovely. Now, the other chappy I've got... <clears throat> excuse me. I also have a little bit of a cold as the autumn is coming on. 
I fucking love autumn. I, it's my favourite season of all. Um, and it's very rare I get colds, but this one's giving me a cold for some bizarre reason. Anywho, the other fusor I'm going to do, I didn't know existed until quite recently. Um, I saw it at Auto Assembly along with two other versions of it that I just, I had to get. This freaky beastie is Buzzclaw, and he is an utter joy. This is arguably one of my favourite things I got from uh, Auto Assembly, along with the two repaints that I've got of him. They're Botcon repaints. Mm. They're from the Botcon Descent into Evil boxed set, which is currently going on eBay uh, for a lot of money. But if I, it's still there, when I get paid at the end of the month, I'm going to get it. <sighs> because then I'll have completed my Beast Wars Generals set. I will have the Death Saurus, and that will be it. I'll have all of the Predacon uh, Generals, which will be lovely, and I'll display them up there on a big shelf, and it will be wonderful, and my life will be complete, and then I can die happy. Um, anyway, this is uh, Buzzclaw, one of the rarest, most obscure Predacon Fusors. Uh, most people don't even know this thing exists. He is part lizard, part insect thingy, a man mantis perhaps? I, it's hard to tell really. But he's very nice. Very, very, very lovely. Gorgeous colours all over the place. And there's really, there's not much to say about him in terms of character to be perfectly honest. Pardon me, a bit more digestion there. That stew, that casserole is just sitting beautifully at the moment. I'm feeling very contented here. Anyway, not much to say in terms of character really about Buzzclaw. He's a Predacon and we all know what Predacon's like. He's the very he's a very stereotypical Predacon. He's um, very confident, very powerful, very clever, very skilled, or at least he would like you to think so. Apparently all of that is just uh, he is very skilled and he is very powerful and he is very clever, but he's also Apparently very insecure. Well, I don't know. He has some crippling neuroses, apparently, which um, he believes all the other Predacons are aware of. He thinks they're talking behind his back and that they constantly belittle him and all this bullshit. And there you go. He's a bit of a neurotic. But the toy is very, very lovely. Very lovely indeed. Lots of big, bright sort of candy bar colours, a bag of sweets colours. He looks like a big old boiled sweet. I kind of like that quality in Transformers. Lots of semi-translucent plastic. It's sort of like misted or smoked plastic that's been coloured that actually works really well. It makes it look like genuine insect carapace, which I like. It's better than that, that shitty sort of tinted glass sweetie su half sucked sweetie affair that you get with modern entirely transparent clear plastic transformers all of which are fucking shit all right all of which are bollocks stop doing it hasbro particularly stop giving us clear versions of characters like galvatron and rodimus prime and all that because they're wank they don't work they're shit <clears throat> anyway after that tirade, there is Buzzclaw in his beast mode. It's gorgeous. He's got lovely articulate legs, lovely, lovely articulate arms, this wonderful head here with his little bandito moustache, which is actually his, his jaw and mandibles. He does have this little gimmicky thing. You can do it he's got a little lever on his back, and when you do it, he... Well, he waves at you with both hands in a slightly over enthusiastic fashion shall we say it's um it's an odd gimmick that one and it may it doesn't really make him look like the predacon warrior he's supposed to be transformation interesting <clears throat> really really interesting he has a cool transformation he does have rarely amongst transformers from this era he has a bit that completely comes off this is a shield that he wears in robot mode that's quite kind of cool I can definitely forgive that. Usually, bits that come off are a little bit meh, but no, I can I can get behind that. It takes a while to figure out this. It is a very, it's a subtle transformation for a bot so small, because he is just a basic. He would be a, a scout class by today's standards, I'm fairly certain. <clears throat> but there are lots of subtle little joints and hinges and things. That whole, actually, yeah, that whole back section comes off as well. I forgot to mention that. <sighs> but it doesn't have to. 
that's the thing, it doesn't have to. It can stay on and just swivel around. In fact, I very rarely remove that. You don't really need to. On it goes again. Yeah, what have I got to do here? Oh, yeah, you just lift his arms up like so. And, oh, look, little fish come out of his... Um, his beast mode legs, that's nice. And he has, unlike many uh, Fusors and Beast Wars toys in general, he has two perfectly formed, fully functioning arms with perfectly formed, fully functioning G1 style fists. <gasps> mm. Orgasmic, isn't it? I think that's basically it. Just position these and... Uh, yeah, that's more or less the ticket. No, I've just got to get a shield and stick it on. It's not really a shield, is it? It's a bit of the insect, but we won't hold that against him because he looks pretty darn cool. I really, really like this guy. Very fond. Very fond, indeed. Um, yeah. Yeah. There we go. Right then. That, uh, wee beastie is... A Baz a claw in uh, robot mode, and he looks even more like a big old confection in this mode than he does in beast mode. His colour, he's much more orange. He's much more sort of orange flavoured in this mode. This back section with the arms and the wings, it's sort of multiple choice. You can flip it around and have the wings up like that if you so desire, and have the the arms coming down at his waists if that's really what floats your boat. Either way is fine. I tend to prefer the wings at the bottom and the arms at the top, like so. He's a very, very, very decent bot indeed. Odd colour scheme, very bright, very garish, almost almost maximal in its friendliness. But he's cool. He's, a, he's very much a Predacon, and I like that. Very sweet little bot. Beastly, beastly, gurning, constipated face. That's cool. Uh, yeah, he's nice. He's very cool. Now, this guy had a couple, as I said earlier, had a couple of repaints that were sold in the Botcon Descent into Evil set that are not Predacons. What they are, are Decepticons. Yeah, they are apparently, according to the blurb, they are the last surviving members of the Insecticon cult. Apparently the Insecticons from G1 continued throughout the Beast Era, throughout the Great Wars, becoming their own little sub-faction that accrued other members and evolved and transformed uh, throughout the centuries, and they still survive. These guys are the last surviving members. This is uh, Bosclaw, again, in his Decepticon form. Whether they're the same characters or not is is debatable because that Buzzclaw, the Beast Wars one, is very different from this guy. This Buzzclaw is a gladiator by all accounts. He's a gladiator in the uh, the illegal Cybertronian pits which have uh, re-risen in the Predacon Maximal era and he is unbelievably skilled by all accounts. Very very skilled in close combat uh, in a variety of Cybertronian martial arts. He's pretty damn deadly. And also, like the other Insecticons, like his ancestors in the Insecticons, excuse me, he has the uh, hidden capacity to clone himself. So these these toys are the kind of things where you can get multiple versions of them, and you can have just swarms of them everywhere. Re uh, I kind of like that. That's kind of cute. Just to prove that he is a Decepticon and not a Predacon, if you bring the legs up there, he does have a little Decepticon symbol inside of his shield. So, yes, apparently he's also very loyal to the ideal of the Decepticons. He's trying to bring them back, along with his partner, the leader of the Insecticons. Let me find him a moment. Ah, oh, here he is. This guy is the leader of the Insecticons in the Beast Era. This is Dirge, believe it or not. Not the same Dirge from G1. This is a guy who just has his name. Um, this guy is um, a Decepticon fanatic. He's a bit like uh, Beast Wars Ravage in that he is completely dedicated to the ideals of the original Decepticons and wants to bring them back and wants to have a whole little family of Insecticons that he can consume entire galaxies with. I'll just get these guys into bot mode so you can see what they're like. They're very, very cool. I just Of all the bots I got from... Um, Auto assembly this year. These ones are undoubtedly my favourites. I can't stop 
playing with them. They aren't the rarest, they aren't the most expensive, they aren't the biggest, they're just nice. They're fun, interesting, quirky little toys and that's really what it's all about insofar as I'm concerned. They are just characterful and beautiful to look at and interesting and cool. And that's really it for me. That's all I require from my bots. <laughs> anyway, there is a dirge in his bot mode. He's very yellow. He has a lot of translucent yellow, a lot of red, and a lot of black, and a lot of purple. Hang on, let me see. There now. That's a little bit better, isn't it? You can see them much more clearly now. Look at that beauty. Look at the light shining through him and all that purple detail. That black veining on his wings. I, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. He's beautiful. Leader of the Insecticons and also a subordinate to um, Deathsaurus. Uh, excuse me, which is rather nice. Uh, let me show you Buzzclaw again, just so you can see. Ah, uh, that's more like it. Look at that. You can see much better now. Oh, I'm shit, technically. I'm completely wank with all this stuff. The the, the, the cameras and, and focusing and all that stuff. I don't have the patience for it. I just like to sit and turn it on and talk at it. Uh, hopefully there'll be a camera that does that reasonably soon that will just do itself. That sounded vaguely rude. Uh, Buzzclaw. That's, that's Buzzclaw in his bot mode. Junior Dirge. Now this is the the other Buzzclaw, the bit my favourite one because of his his colours are just so quintessentially Decepticon. It's it's mm, it's so pretty, purples and yellows and blacks and reds. Uh, that that just is Decepticon. It screams a Decepticon loves, so it does. <laughs> yes, let's get him into an appropriately splendiferous pose. Ah, I don't know why they're so appealing, these things. I really don't. There's just something... They have that X factor that makes good Transformers what they are, regardless of what other faults they may have. And they do have faults. I mean, they're... They're kind of all over the place in terms of their anatomy and bot mode, and a lot of the pieces are, are multiple choice. Also, this backpack has issues staying in one place because of the peg that holds it on. But you can forgive those sins on good bots. You really, really can. There we are. That is uh, the other Buzzclaw, the Decepticon Buzzclaw in his bot mode. I want a pack. I want at least five more of these things, at least five more, and if I get that Descent into Evil set, I might just be able to get it, because I want I want the full swarm, I want all the clones, in the same way that if I got the Botcon Scourge, which I really want, I would want all the sweeps with him. Love these things, Fusors, weird, weird, wonderful, bizarre experiments in uh, bots, nothing like them, there is nothing like them out there, they're just strange. Um, and insofar as I'm concerned, that makes them really interesting. Uh, I like them. I like Fusors. They're not all successful. In fact, some of them are really shit. Really shit. But these guys, these guys just do it. They are fantastic. <laughs>